Hello and welcome to your monthly update from the Covidence UK study. Uh, my name's Adrian Martineau, I'm the Chief Investigator based here at Queen Mary University of London. Um, so today what I wanted to tell you about is something you may have read about in the papers or heard about on the radio, which is the new uh, vaccine against a virus called RSV, which uh, some people are going to be eligible to receive uh, this month and next. So let me tell you a little bit about it. So what is RSV? RSV stands for respiratory syncytial virus, and it's a pretty major respiratory virus, actually, in the UK and internationally. Um, most common over the winter period, typically uh, between October and February. And it causes quite a bit of morbidity and even mortality in the UK. Um, UK HSA estimates that around 30,000 children aged under five years in the UK are hospitalised annually due to infections with this virus, which causes most commonly in infants a condition called bronchiolitis. And that results in 20 to 30 deaths of infants per year. Um, and the other group of people who are susceptible are older adults, uh, particularly people with underlying uh, airways disease such as asthma, COPD or people who've got weakened immune systems for one reason or another. Um, and in people aged 75 plus, this virus causes around 9,000 hospitalizations per year in the UK. So it's a pretty significant uh, cause of morbidity and mortality in the UK. Um, now, the good news is that in the last couple of years, uh, a vaccine has been developed and evaluated in two populations in particular and shown to be safe and to offer a significant degree of protection. So I just wanted to share with you the evidence that's really underlying the uh, new campaign of vaccination against this virus. So there are basically two large clinical trials, both published in the New England Journal of Medicine uh, in the year 2023. Um, the first one recruited adults aged 60 plus and you can see the results of it here. Uh, many thousands of participants, I hasten to add. Um, the results here, the outcomes were co-primary. The first of all, they looked at uh, lower respiratory tract illness presenting with at least two symptoms. Uh, that's the less severe outcome um, and associated with detection of RSV by RT-PCR swabs. And then the, the major outcome was illness presenting with at least three symptoms. So that's more severe illness, which you can see is a bit rarer here. And what you can see is that the people who'd been vaccinated had about a threefold lower risk of getting illness with two symptoms and a sevenfold lower risk of getting illness associated with three symptoms due to RSV if they'd been vaccinated than if they hadn't. Now, the other group who stand particularly to benefit from this are young infants and the approach that's been used to boost their immunity has actually been to offer the vaccine to pregnant women. So that's women who are 28 weeks or more uh, pregnant. And this trial also reported in the New England Journal um, of the same year, 2023, by Beata Kampman and colleagues, um, showed very significant protection for infants of mothers who had received the RSV vaccine. So what you can see here on the right hand side of the picture is on the Y axis, the percentage of children who succumb to severe RSV infection. And here on the excess number of days after birth, and you can see that the children who had placebo were significantly more likely to succumb to an RSV severe infection than those who were born to mums who'd been vaccinated. Um, vaccine efficacy effectively tells you that around 70, there's about 70 to 80 percent protection. So it's not 100 percent protection. No vaccine actually can offer that, but a really, really good degree of protection. Now, obviously, the question on everyone's lips is going to be how safe is this vaccine? So I thought I would just drill down to the safety data for both of these trials, um, looking at three groups, the adults aged 60 plus, uh, the pregnant mums and their offspring. So looking at the adults age 60 plus from the first of these trials, um, the orange bars show the proportion of participants who had different types 
of adverse reaction uh, and the grey blue bars represent those who had those reactions but had a placebo um, and you can see that there is actually no statistically significant difference in risk of either local reactions, systemic events or any adverse event up to one month um, between those who received the real vaccine and those who received a placebo injection of salty water. Um, similarly, adverse events were well balanced between intervention and placebo arms among pregnant mums who received the jab uh, and similarly among the offspring that's children uh, up to one month after birth from women who'd received either the vaccine or an injection of salty water placebo. So we've got good confidence that this is a safe vaccine to have. So the big question, of course, is am I eligible? And at the moment, uh, the vaccine's being offered just to two groups of people. Um, first of all, women who are 28 weeks plus pregnant. And secondly, uh, adults aged 75 to 79 years old on the 24th of September 2024. So it's quite a narrow age group. Um, just to repeat that, that's adults aged 75 to 79 on the 24th of September 2024. So the question that then jumps to my mind is why are we not offering it to particularly to people aged 80 plus who are going to be at really the highest risk of getting severe disease. And one explanation is that the big trial that showed efficacy actually didn't have that many people aged 80 plus uh, taking part in it. Here you can see something from the uh, a table from the paper in New England Journal showing the age breakdown of participants in that trial. And you can see that just 5.6% of participants were aged 80 plus with around 95% of people being aged uh, in the 60 to 80 age bracket. So one possible explanation is that we don't have huge amounts of data on that older age group. Um, I'm aware from a, a webinar that UK HSA ran back in July that there may be an extension to this initial program that will be considered once there's more certainty around protection in people aged 80 plus and once the real world impact of vaccinating people aged 75 to 80 has been ascertained. So I think decisions around offering the vaccine to people aged 80 plus uh, will be guided by emerging evidence from how the initial offering goes. Uh, but just to put this in international context, in the USA, the CDC, which is the USA's um, public health advisory body on infection, the Centers for Disease Control, recommends a single dose of this vaccine for all adults aged 75 plus and for adults aged 60 to 74 who have increased risk of severe RSV disease, and that's primarily people with underlying airways disease or immunocompromise. Um, and in fact, the vaccine is licensed uh, for people aged 60 plus. So if you don't uh, qualify for the current criteria for the NHS offer, um, you may be wondering if you can get the vaccine privately, and the answer is yes, as long as you're aged uh, 60 plus, um, but it won't be cheap. Um, I've looked it up and the cost is around uh, in excess of £200 from different providers. So um, that is the situation with vaccine availability at the moment. Um, other details you may want to know is that, first of all, this is a single jab only. Um, so it's not something that's going to be repeated every year. The jab is thought to offer protection over a considerably longer period than one year. And in terms of where you get it, um, if you're in the older age group, uh, then it's available via your GP. And if you're in the um, pregnant mum group, then maternity services will be offering uh, this vaccine uh, as a routine. So get in touch with uh, them. Uh, so the bottom line here then is that uh, as of September, October, um, across the UK, women who are 28 weeks or more pregnant and adults aged 75 to 79 currently will be eligible to receive a single dose of the new RSV vaccine. And this will safely reduce risk of severe respiratory illness, both in the infants of vaccinated mums and in vaccinated older adults. 
So I hope that's cleared up any questions you may have had about this uh, new offer. And all that remains is for me to thank you all for your continued participation in the study. And I look forward to catching up with you with a further update on the acute respiratory infection space in a month's time. For now, from all of us here at Covidence UK, goodbye. <laughs>